What does this course offer you? We're just getting started and we just built and edited our first Angular application. But of course we didn't fully understand what we did there. So that's why in the next lecture we're going to dive into the basics of Angular. What are components? What did we do there with this two-way data binding and how does that all work? This section will answer it and we'll take a very detailed look at it and we'll also explain how all these files you saw in your project are connected to each other. Well then we're going to have a look at components and data binding, two important key features and we actually saw both already in our first application. Angular apps are built up from components and data binding is simply how you output data in your DOM in the end or, as we will also learn, react to user events. Angular has another key feature, directives. ng-model, which we used with two-way data binding, actually is such a directive. And you will learn more about the built-in directives in this section and also, very important, build your own directives. Nice little helpers, instructions you can place in your templates in your HTML code, which will then do something at runtime depending on the commands you wrote in there. Well, and after having a look at this, we're going to learn more about services and dependency injection, a core feature of Angular, which makes it really easy for you to have your different pieces in your app communicate with each other, to centralize code, and really to manage the state of your application. Once we're finished with that, it's time to have a look at routing, because thus far we will only have been on one page, well we're always on one page since it's a single page application, but to the user it really looked like one page. With routing we introduce the management of different URLs so that to the user it looks like we're switching pages even though technically we will still remain on that single page. Sounds great, it is, and routing shows you how it works. Then it's time to have a look at observables, something which will make more sense once you've been to the routing section. It is a concept allowing you to work with asynchronous code, Angular embraces it, it's really powerful and this section explains how it works. Then we'll have a look at forms, because handling forms, handling user input is a key task of almost any application and this section takes a very close look at it. After we're done with forms, we're going to have a look at pipes, another nice feature which makes it easy for you to transform the output, so what you display on the template at runtime. Well, we're nearing the end, but not before having a look at HTTP. What if you need to reach out to a web server? What if you need to store some data in a database? Angular can't connect to a database directly, but it can connect to a server which is able to. And the HTTP section shows just that. Thereafter, we'll have a look at authentication. What does authentication mean in an Angular application? How does it work? And once we're at it, let's simply implement it in an application. Then we're going to have a look at some optimizations we can put into place and how we can manage different modules in our application, something you will really understand once we are at this point. And then we're going to deploy an application and learn how we can get our Angular application from our local machine to a place in the internet where we can view it. And if that's not enough for you, we're also going to have a look at animations and testing Angular applications. And besides that, throughout the whole course, we're going to build a real project, putting all these things you learn in the individual sections into practice and therefore seeing how they are used in a real project. So with that, I feel very confident you're going to be an Angular master after finishing this course and I can't wait to start this journey together with you.